Yes, it is. It is. It is. It is. We jumped on a smidge bit early for all of you here today because you know, so there's so <laughs> many of you here today. <clears throat> but the so I haven't been on YouTube in a while and I didn't even know they changed their live stream thing. Like what? <laughs> it automatically is a black screen and I can't turn the camera right away or anything. Um, yeah, so that was weird. Anyways, hello everybody, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. Today is Sunday, so Sunday, where I hope to inspire you to sew any day of the week, even on Sunday. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're here just a few minutes early, like I said, uh, making sure everything works because of the new live button, which was very odd. Um, so let's see, I can't see who's all here because there's like, uh, too many of you here and I don't know how far I can go back. Oh, I can't even go that far back. We got Susan, Carissa, Nanny, Lisa, Crystal, Teresa, Joyce, Seacross, Brenda, Lori, uh, Frock. I think I said that correctly. I'm unsure. Uh, Lori, Debbie, Anne, Jenny, Janine, Ronnie, Melody, Jacqueline, Barbara, Miss So Becca's here, Becky, Nancy, uh, Barbara, Tamala, G and B, Jan, Janine, Zondra, Donna, Roxanne, Kim, um, Malena, Yvonne. Christy, Polly, and I'm kind of just scanning through Chris, Leah, Danelle. Danelle, that's my middle name. Did you know that? <laughs> um, let's see, Tracy, Pat, Tony, lots and lots of you guys. And if I missed your name, hello and welcome. Welcome, welcome. It's good to be back. Uh, it was like a vacation almost, which I've never taken from So Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's throw that out of the way. So today I am working on my line work project. So a couple weeks back, uh, So Becca, Teresa Louise, I Quilt 2, and Ian, uh, Off Crafter Kilter Ian, Off Kilter Crafter Ian. Wow, I always mess that up. He knows and he understands, Ian, if you're watching. <laughs> um, all of them and I did a challenge where we all used the same layer cake. It was a Tula line work layer cake. Line work is the, the name of the line of the Tula line. Um, and it's mainly her line drawings and then there's pops of color added and it's super adorable. And we challenged each other to make something, all of us making something different out of this. And they went with patterns. I obviously, don't use patterns. So I did my own thing and have created this lovely block here that looks like this. And I will re-show you how I'm doing that. And then when I do complete this project, whatever I don't finish today, obviously I will be making a video on the process of making this quilt, which you're seeing as you sit here right now watching. <laughs> so so far, since the last time, I haven't done really much sewing lately, but um, not really at all. Uh, this is how many I had completed, which is, I don't know, like 30 or something. I don't know. And the pack came with 42 10 inch squares. So I added two inch squares of two different colors. They're two inch by two inch. And they're going to be going in these three spots here on my block. And I'm going to show you how I did that because you can do this with anything. It doesn't have to be a Tula line work layer cake. It could be whatever it is you want. So I'm going to go ahead they, and. They want to hear if you are using this all the time and what's going on with the other juki. Okay. So this Juki HZL F600 Exceed series machine. This is just temporary because my Juki TL2010Q, if you guys didn't know, <laughs> uh, I blew the motor. So in a little bit over six years of having my Juki T 
Scale 2010Q. I blew the motor. Yep, that's right. I sew way too much. Really, I do. <laughs> so it's in the shop, and we haven't heard anything from the shop because he said he'll get it done when the motor comes in. So he well, had to order it. We called them. And yeah, we're we waiting called for them to call back. Yeah, we called the check and see, you know, the estimated time on it. So until then, I'm slow poke Joe <laughs> on this thing. Now, it's not that slow, but for me, it's slow and I'm totally not used to it. But I am getting used to sewing a quarter inch seam without a seam guide. But once I go back to my Juki, I'm 100% sure. Well, this is a Juki too. Yeah, but anyway, once I go back to the other Juki, I'm pretty sure I will uh, use the seam guide still because I sew so fast that it's kind of hard to keep a quarter inch seam even with the seam guide because <laughs> I go too quick. All right, so what I am doing here is stacking all of my 10 inch squares. There's six of them in this stack. So I'm doing them in stacks of six. So seven piles of six from the layer cake. And they're stacked up. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to chop it up all together. And I will tell you the numbers. It's actually quite simple. We're going to start with one edge. So I always just do my left side. So from the left, I'm going to cut a two inch strip off of all six, just like that. And then I'm going to take my same ruler, not moving anything. And I'm going to go to the bottom and cut six or six, two inches off of that as well, off of all six pieces. That's why I said six. So that's the first cut. So I'm going to separate that out of the way. If I make sure that it's cut all the way through, there's a spot right there. Get it right there. Okay. And now I'm not going to move or adjust anything. I'm just going to toss these six two inch squares out of the way because I don't need those. We're going to move on to the next cut again from the left. I'm going to cut a two inch strip off of the big piece. The two little ones, keep them out of the way. Your two strips, you want those out of the way. So a two inch strip cut off and then I'm going to go again to the bottom and I'm going to cut a two inch strip off the bottom. Just like that. Again, moving everything out of the way and I'm going to take these two inch squares because I don't need them and pile them up. So everything's out of the way. We have one more big square left to work with. We're going to go ahead and from the left again, cut two inches. Just like that. And it shifted because that's what happens. Make sure that if it shifts that you just readjust. And then we're going to go to the bottom and cut again two inches. You guys see the theme here? The two inches, two inch cuts. And then again, I'm going to take away these because I don't need them. And instead, I'm going to replace with six of the blue on the third set, six of the pink in the middle, and six more of the blue on the upper ones. So that when the block is put back together, even though it's not going this way, there's going to be opposite colors. The next step is to take this third pile. And we're going to put this top one to the bottom. You guys notice the theme here. I tend to do this a lot with my patterns. Top one to the bottom. Then this next one, you can either leave it or you can take the top two and put those to the bottom. As long as we're mixing everything up. So top two to the bottom, just like that. And again, you could either leave this one. It doesn't matter which one you leave. And then go here to this big pile, take the top three and put those to the bottom. So one of my stripes is still there. Okay. Or you could have left this one. It doesn't matter as long as all four are now different. So now all we have to do is sew it back together again, which is quite simple. So I'm going to bring it close to me like this. And we're going to turn an iron on because I'm going to do it all right here in the same area. We're going to start with this top pile of big squares and our first set of two inch strips from the left side. Everything's on the left. So obviously refer to your left hand side every time. And I'm just going to put these 
right sides together and sew all six of these through and I'm going to keep them in order. And that's all. That's all that's on this. It's just keeping everything in order. This is pretty easy to do, self-explanatory once you make your cuts and definitely get a fun block out of it. It would also be nice if my foot pedal was in a position. That might Oh, thank you, Katie. That's so sweet of you. Ooh, yeah. My hip is also getting worse, guys. So uh, I haven't been using the knee lift as much because it's actually hurting to push the knee lift over. And on this machine, it's actually quite simple, but it's actually hurting me. The size square to start with is a 10 inch square. Oh. So soon, just so you guys know, I will be off of YouTube yet again because I'm having surgery on my hip and I won't be able to, I'll be in a special hip brace that goes on my leg and around my hips area for like three weeks. So, and I'll be on crutches, so I won't be able to stand long in here and stuff. So I'm going to try to get as many videos as I can out of the way before my surgery. It's not scheduled yet, but they already gave me the surgery pamphlet and all the information about it and they already got my uh, physical therapy because I'll be in physical therapy for the first couple months. Um, all that is also ready to go. I just need the surgery date, which I'll let you guys all know, but that's also coming up in my life. <laughs> Lots of stuff going on around here. But I can hand sew in bed. So, so Sundays should still be here, but just not, no real teaching of anything, you know? All right. I sewed all six of them through. I'm going to take that bottom one and keep it on the bottom. Debbie, no, we're good. That's what Scott said to say to you, because I don't know what you asked. Oh, no, we're good. All right. They're stacked. I'm going to flip it upside down like this, where that bottom one is on the top, and I'm going to press everything towards that big center square. This is how I keep everything in order. I'm very good at keeping my quilt pieces in order. So I'm just pressing them all towards the big square, so all towards the middle pretty much. And everything is back in that same order I started in, but I would not press creases into my fabric. <laughs> All right, so part one, all done. We need to take now the two inch by two inch squares that we replaced and the bottom two inch by, it's, I don't even remember how many inches that is, four inch, two inch by four inch piece. And we're gonna sew these together. And again, I'm gonna chain piece them in order in the row that they're in. And I do want to answer a question that I've been asked a bazillion times. Why do I put the big piece on top of the little piece instead of the little piece on top of the big piece? So here is a very complicated answer for you. I do that because I'm trying to keep everything in this order. If I turned everything around, I'm upside down. And I don't like being upside down. I like everything in the original order that it was in to stay right side up. Oh, Lisa, you didn't have to do that. Thank you, guys. You guys don't have to do that. You don't have to super chat. Thank you. Thank you. Very much appreciated. This little thing? Uh, 12 inches by 18 inches. It's the June Taylor Quilters Cut and Press Tube. They sell them at Walmart. They sell them at Joann's. They sell them at Hobby Lobby. They sell them everywhere. It's a quite common thing just know that they get stained really easily really quickly <laughs> and they also bow <laughs> but anyways yeah back to that answer that's why I put the pieces with the bigger piece on top is because I'm trying to keep everything right side up I don't want to be upside down and get out of order so 
Again, I'm stacking the bottom to the top, just like this. Next to me. Oh man, you guys, you guys don't need to do this. Share, is that Sherry? Thank you, Sherry, so very much. You guys don't need to do that. And what's your new machine? This is a Juki HZL F600. It's the Exceed series. That's what it says. Exceed Quilt and Pro Special. That's what it's like. Scotty has put a link in so that you guys can find it and learn about it. All right, these pieces, I flipped it upside down, so now my bottom is on the top, and I'm going to press them towards the 2 inch by 2 inch square. So they're pressed towards my colored square, or my newest added piece. And as I press them, one at a time, they're going right back into the order in which they actually go. This is what I, this is like the video I did, um, a little over a year ago, maybe like two years ago, I did a how I get things done so fast. Well, this is how because I keep things chain pieced in order and I do the repetitive thing about it. All right. Now Can we're going to take a special electronic buttonhole foot. Special electronic buttonhole thing. Yes, it's in the little case and it plugs into here. Uh, I don't know how to use it and I probably will never use it. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's a franken pieced. Yes, it is franken. <laughs> it's a franken pieced Panasonic <laughs> iron. So the actual base <laughs> itself is from the NIWL six oh seven. It's the ceramic base, but it has the WL six hundred L six hundred uh, purple. This thing, which I have just recently taught while I was in Vegas with Becca. People didn't know that this comes off so that you can fill your water separately. So just in case you didn't know, there's a little button at your, if you're holding it with your right hand, a little button on your first finger. You push it and it comes off just in case you needed to know. No more trying to open this hole and fill it <laughs> with the whole iron. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to sew these together now by turning it. And again, I'm putting the big piece on the top. I know some people think it's weird, but I do it. I can still see, and it's working for me. Seam probably does shrink my fabric, but does it bother me? No. <laughs> I use lots of steam when I do all my stuff. Lots of steam. I'm a steam person. Um, not much to recover from on my latest shirt. My hip is still hurting. My feet are killing me a little bit more. I did do a lot of walking because not only did I do a lot of walking with Becca, but I did a lot of walking um, with Eric because <laughs> we walked the strip, which is a lot more walking. I guess I can talk about my Vegas trip. So I went to Vegas. It was a pre-planned trip. No, this is just a me making myself, making something up as I go block. Okay. So I pre-planned a trip to go meet Becca in Vegas. She had a work thing, so she was going to be in Vegas anyway. And we had already pre-planned for me to come and hang out and go to quilt shops and just do all sorts of fun stuff that didn't have any sewing involved. We were just going to hang out, visit, and spend time with each other because Becca is my best friend and I needed some best friend time. So I went to my Vegas trip and um, Becca, if you guys watch So Becca, she posted a video that she talked about in her vlog. Um, every time I think of a Tesla, I say Becca because <laughs> she had a little boo-boo. So when I got there, she had all these plans to, you know, give me big hugs and lots of love, but I got there and she's on the phone all frustrated, frustrated, flustered because she had just got into an accident and was on the phone with the insurance companies and all that. So I was the one that actually gave her a hug and told her, it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. We'll be fine. But after those shenanigans were over and everything, you know, was good, we actually hung out. And we went and uh, 
saw a show. I don't think it's maybe I sh- I don't know. She didn't talk about it, so I'm not going to talk about what show. But we went and saw a show, a very nice show, very nice show. And then um, we hung out and in the room afterwards, and it was late. And I guess we're just too old because <laughs> we went to bed. <laughs> the next day we got up, and we had breakfast. And we went, and Lori, uh, on here you guys have met her as Auntie El Handmaid. She's such a great friend because she was our tour guide for the day. She took the time to drive me and Becca around to all the quilt shops in Vegas, like all of them. And I appreciate it, Lori. You know very much. She, because me and Becca would have just got lost in Vegas. There's so much construction and things going on there and freeways and everything that I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of glad that Lori drove us for to go around everywhere. So we went to all the quilt shops, Quiltique, Quilt, what was the other one called? Uh, something so, oh my goodness, I can't think of the name. So something. Anyway. We went to So Yeah, we went to another little one that does cross stitching. I don't remember the name of that one at all. Um, And I don't do cross stitching, but we went there anyway. And then, um, oh my goodness, uh, the Christmas Goose, we went there too. And all of them such lovely, lovely. So so what? So Nation, what Eric said. So Nation. I don't know. No, that doesn't, no, that doesn't sound right. So something with an A or so apparently or so, I don't know, something like that. It's a weird name. Anyways, um, so we went to all the quilt shops and then Scott put the link in for you, Roxanne. We went into all those quilt shops and spent some money, spent some money which I will show you all tomorrow, my haul from my shopping adventures in Vegas. Um, And then after, uh, Eric was actually supposed to be in town, but he wasn't. So he didn't get to make it to this, but Becca and I went to, um, so yeah, that was our last trip of the day. And while we were there, we met with a, Quite a few. We met seven of our combined followers. Such sweet, sweet, sweet people. You guys all know that we love you guys and thank you for your support. And it was wonderful meeting all of you. Um, So we went and did that. We had a little meet and greet. And then after, we actually all went out to a taco shop um, where I had a chicken quesadilla. Yum. Yum. At the taco shop. We all went to a taco shop and enjoyed tacos and some of them that had a, what is it called? A loaded fries where it has like carne asada or chicken or whatever on it and cheese and, and everything on fries. And it was very good. Very, very good. And it was easy to find. It was literally down the street from the So Yeah building. A 2.0 stitch length. Um, so we went and did that. And then once we were done, Becca and I went back to the room and we relaxed for a little while. And we were like, let's go see a show, you know, so we could go see a show again. But then we looked online and we're trying to find a show and everything was either too expensive and or they were already booked because, you know, it was last minute. Obviously, we didn't pre-plan shows and stuff because we just didn't do that. But. Um, so they were too expensive. We decided to stay in, but in the midst of staying in, we watched a little bit of a movie and decided to go swimming in the pool because the hotel that we were staying at had a pool and it was, I can't say it was overly heated, but it was heated enough to get into the pool and it felt great. And I definitely needed a swim and so did Becca. So we sat around, not sat around, but floated around in the pool for gosh, at least an hour and 20 minutes or so. Like, to the point where we had crinkly skin. (laughs) So we did that. And then we went back up to the room and finished our movie. And guess what? Like old people again, we passed out. (laughs) 
and we shared the same bed too. So Becca and I, you know, we had our close friendship stuff. Then uh, the next morning, Becca had to catch a plane on Saturday morning. Well, Saturday early afternoon, before afternoon, she had to get on a plane. So Eric, he got in late on um, Friday night, so we didn't get to see him Friday night. But he showed up Saturday morning, and we all had breakfast together. And did you have your enchilada recipe? Did what? Did you give anybody your enchilada recipe? Nobody asked for my enchilada recipe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, then no. Then no. Um, so we had breakfast at the hotel. I mean, because they have that, what is it called, Scott? The, the breakfast that they supply? Continental. Continental breakfast. And let's just say they had a lot. Like, you could make your own waffles, and we had scrambled eggs, and we yeah, had... You had a real breakfast. Like, Most we had... a continental breakfast is a bowl of cereal and, and a, a muffin, muffin or muffin. something. Well, it's a little dinky baby <laughs> Yeah, it was an actual continental breakfast. It was amazing. They had so much to choose from. So we had the breakfast there, and then we said our goodbyes to Miss Becca, and she got on... Well, she went to the airport to get on the plane. And then Eric and I... Decided to spend the rest of the day together in Vegas by going out on the strip. Now, I already kind of prepared myself for that much walking, but not as much walking as I really thought I prepared myself for because we really walked. And there was lots of people. I mean, on a Saturday afternoon, the strip was packed. So packed. Anyways, and now so. You can barely move because of all that walking. <laughs> Yeah, all that walking uh, really got to me. But uh, we had so much fun. So Eric and I went to this place first. We went to the Bellagio where they have this the gardens. Oh, my gosh. Now, I don't like strong perfume scents. So it was really, really strong of flowers at the gardens. It really, really was strong. But it was beautiful. So I got over the smell only because the sight of all the flowers. I was so excited to see all those flowers that I even video chatted Scott to show him because he couldn't be there in person. And it was amazing, like just tulips everywhere. The, I think the theme was something tulip because there was tulips everywhere. And it was just so beautiful. And I did take pictures. Um, I'll have to make a video of all those pictures of our trip, but yeah, so then after, I had never been in most of the casinos in Vegas because I don't really go there often, but we went out the front of the Bellagio, and I didn't know that they had a flower, glass flower ceiling. So when you look up, it's literally these big, humongous, glass-blown flowers, and it was so colorful and so beautiful that I even took pictures at that. Because <laughs> it was amazing. Um, Oh, yeah. Oh, and we stopped and saw the chocolate fountain, which I also, again, took pictures of. I felt like a tourist, yet I've been to Vegas a bazillion times. Um, anyway, so we went there, and then when we left there, we started our trip down the, the, the strip. <laughs> so I'm on the next step, by the way. Got those next sides. Just continuing on here. So we get to the strip. And we're walking down it, and there's this place called The Flyover, or Flyover. I'm pretty sure it was The Flyover. And I'm like, Eric, we got to go. We got to go flying. Where does this fly? <laughs> I really thought it was going to be like an airplane ride or something like that, or helicopter rides. But no, it's just a, 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 a ride, an actual ride. So we went in there, and we took a flight, pretty much over iceland so if you're ever in vegas i highly highly recommend and eric does too going to the flyover it's on the strip i don't remember what casino it's next to but it has a sign out front a big lit up sign that says the flyover and um we took the iceland experience so we literally flew over they showed like how it started out as volcanoes while you're flying around and then how the snow came and then how that melted and created beautiful rock formations and beautiful like uh grass greeny areas and then more snow in the winter and then like as this so it's like this thing you go in and it's a big huge theater type screen and it's literally enormous and then you sit in this row of like 10 or whatever and it has this like hood thing that's way above our heads and you get strapped in like any regular ride and so we all sit down in that 
and you go to this like pre-show first where they explain everything and about the experience and so on and then for 25 minutes you get to fly around whatever one you choose this we chose iceland they had another one i don't remember what it was but it was a pacific uh coast area um ride but we took that and it was amazing it literally felt like we were flying so the the machine itself the ride that you sit in everything goes pitch black and you forget and it push it the the ride pushes you out into the open nothing underneath your feet it's just an open ground and the whole unit goes side forward side forward up like you're flying up flying down flying side to side and so on and so forth oh my goodness it literally felt like we were flying like the, the hood thing that comes over blows air onto you and like i don't know if it's a mental thing or what but it makes you feel like the g-force of going faster and slower kick in and they blew mist into our faces and everything and it literally felt like we we're flying through the clouds or flying under you know at the the waterfalls and are flying through this or you know it was amazing so i highly highly recommend the flyover if you go to vegas as one of the things you should see so then we left yeah it's a roller coaster but uh, oh no i'll get to that after we did the flyover we went to the coca-cola eric is it a factory or is it just the coca-cola thing either way we went to coca-cola and eric wanted to try the flavors from around the world of coca-cola product products now i don't drink soda so i got a um what is it called uh icy but i did end up trying so he got a 16 um i'm out of thread look at that he got a 16 flavor um coca-cola tester thing so it comes with 16 cups and it has a little piece of paper that tells you where all the flavors and stuff come from and what the flavor is so like strawberry fanta from germany was one of them and then since i don't drink soda and i don't do fizzy bubbly anything because it burns my throat really bad um he tested first to make sure that it was uh <coughs> good enough not as fizzy bubbly for me to be able to even try it so he tasted it first and then I tasted it second. So I actually drank a tiny sips of soda. And I gotta tell you, one of them tasted like barbecue sauce. Who would want to drink barbecue sauce soda? <laughs> it was weird. And then there was a couple other of them that, that had some weird flavors. Some couldn't quite, oops, something's happening here. Couldn't quite place the flavors, but they definitely were interesting. Like yeah, some, oh, the cough syrup ones I did like, though. They weren't very fizzy bubbly, and I don't mind cough syrup, so it was okay. <laughs> For me, it was okay. So then, after we left there, you could, the Coca-Cola place, you could actually see the um, New York, New York casino. And on top of the New York, New York is a roller coaster. Now, I have not rode a roller coaster. And many, many, many moons. I used to love to go to Magic Mountain, Knott's Berry Farm, uh, Disney, the Disneyland, and all those places when I was younger. But since I've been an adult, I since I've been an adult, I have not. Sorry, I'm struggling here. I don't know what the heck's the problem. I have not gone on a roller coaster, so we had to go. But first, we had to see how much it even cost because I had a feeling it was gonna be like a hundred dollars per person or something stupidly crazy in price turns out it was not it was very affordable um it would probably cost the same to go to a theme park and, and ride the same rides over and over again but the the a roller coaster on top of the new york new york was an experience let's just say that so we did it and eric my friend eric it's it's, it's so funny he is like six foot seven he says he's shorter but we measured him when he was here and because I had to measure him. Anyways, he is so tall that he barely fit into that roller coaster. And I just stabbed myself trying to get this untangled here. Um, so he's literally, they go to put 
you're in the seat thing and then there's a lever that comes down at your ankles to hold your feet back and in then there's a, a thing that goes over your lap and then there's a thing that comes over your shoulders now i'm short so the thing of my shoulders was like, like this far away from me so it just went down easily and i'm small so it everything clipped just fine but eric's on the other hand his body his shoulders are way up here and the shoulder things are way down here so they had to come up and around him and then down but he's also so tall that the leg thing was pushing and then the seat belt thing was pushing that they had to come and shove that thing down and yank down on his shoulders so he looked like he's just like shoved in there like this where he could lift his arms yay <laughs> i felt so bad because he's so tall but <laughs> it was funny at the same time so we rode this roller coaster and let's just say it goes higher than it looks like it looks like it's you know kind of low but it really isn't it actually goes a lot higher it has the initial you leave the garage part you know and then you go up this thing up 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 and away and then it goes down and then it drops you <laughs> it goes down around over and up and down and upside down and oh my god it was so much fun and eric thought it was funny because I was screaming at first <laughs> and it was so loud that I was trying to like vocalize and all of a sudden I had to hock a loogie. <laughs> and I'm like, I need to hock a loogie. Because <laughs> I need to just, but he's like, don't, no, don't scream. I swallowed it, of course, but still, <laughs> it was funny, very funny. We had so much fun though. And then when you think it's over, the ride was not over. It went through this black tunnel thing. And then when it, you think you're getting done because it slows you down. All of a sudden, it speeds you back up and you go around the twisty, turny thing and back to the building. It was actually really fun. Really, really fun. So we had a lot of fun. I need a piece of scrap. We had a lot of fun and definitely enjoyed that roller coaster. When that was done, when we were finished with the roller coaster, we had to make our way back to the Bellagio. So we went through New York, New York. Now, I've never actually went through, like I said, the casinos. And we went through New York, New York, and they have a little village in there that's like being in Brooklyn or something or in New York, New York, or I don't know, just like being in New York. It's just this little miniature city. I took pictures again. <laughs> and uh, it was really cool. It was like all these little singular shops that were, um... there we go. Now I'm cooking with butter. All these little shops, so there was like little food places, kind of like you would see on the street corners and streets of New York. And did you arrange all these in an order, or did they come with you? No, I arranged them in the beginning. If you rewind back to when I started making this, you'll see. Um, so we made our way through that, and then we went to another area, and we stayed on the opposite side of the street. So we were on one side, and then we switched to the opposite side of the street. And um, on the way back, we just stopped and looked at things like there was this rock formation um, path. Like it's just a bunch of rocks stacked up in a path and water trickles down. Them. And it, you can tell at night, it wasn't nighttime, but you could tell at night that the lights lighted up and it looks really cool. So we went and looked at that. And, um, we just made our way slowly back to the Bellagio so that we can get in the car and leave for dinner. So eventually, after what felt like 100 miles of walking, we made it back to my car and then drove to the um, to dinner, which we had uh, Cracker Barrel. We had Cracker Barrel for dinner, and it was delicious. We both had the same thing. We had the meatloaf. It was yummy. And then after dinner, we made our way back to his car because there was no sense in driving two cars all over Vegas. We made our way back to his car. I dropped him off, gave him a big hug, and said goodbye. And then I drove my two and a quarter hours home because it did take me a while to get out of Vegas. But um, yeah, we had an amazing time, both Becca and I, both Becca and I with Lori and all the new friends we made, and I'm on the top piece. So see, I'm already getting myself out of order here. That's the top one. Um, we had so much fun, all of us had so much fun, and I'm so glad I got out of the house and went to Vegas and kept my, my time with my best friend. And, 
yeah, that's that's the Vegas trip. <laughs> I highly recommend the roller coaster. I do. <laughs> Although now that I went on that, I, I we've been talking me and Scott saying, well, maybe we should go to like Knott's Berry Farm or something because I definitely need some more roller coaster therapy. <laughs> it was fun, but I won't be able to for a while because of my hip and my feet. But we'll get to it eventually. Got to do some fun things in life. All right, now to the next step, which is the last side. So I'm going to go ahead and add these. Hopefully I don't have any thread problems. That was a weird tangle that happened in the bobbin case area, by the way. That's what I was trying to fix. Oh, and you'll notice with these pieces, I forgot to mention that. There goes the pedal again. My mom gave me this trick that says if you take your pedal and stick it on this iron thing, this mat, I had more than one of these, and you stick your pedal on that, that it shouldn't slide. But uh, I have the chair rolly around thing. So this thing is sliding on the chair rolly around thing. And then the pedal is sliding around on it. I thought it would work, but it's not working as good as I had hoped. Anyway, um, what was I? What was I saying? Oh, uh, you'll notice on these pieces that when you line them up right sides together, you're going to be lining it up with your added squares at the bottom, and you're going to have piece hanging over on the top. Your last piece, too, was hanging over on the top. That's okay because we're going to trim those away because we'll be trimming our block to eight and a half inches when we're done, which is quite simple. We're not really wasting much here. You'll have a little bit of waste with any pattern that you do. This one included. You could probably pre-cut off an inch off of the third set and a half an inch off of the second set if you want, but I'm gonna trim at the end. So I just line it up at the bottom and then the excess hangs over on the top. And I still sew that area. Besides, I would throw that out there in case you're like, oh, hey, this doesn't fit. Well, it does fit. It just doesn't. It's just a little bit longer than it needs to be because of how we cut everything and we're taking away seam allowances. Holy moly, really? A thousand people? There's a thousand of you here watching? Oh, my goodness. That's so awesome. Thank you guys for being here. Like, really, thank you. It makes me happy. It makes me happy that so many of you want to hang out with me. And so I'm hoping that you guys will post in the Facebook group pictures of the projects that you've been working on, whether you're following one of my projects or another pattern or your own thing. All right, last one for this. And then we just have to hook together all of those bottom pieces. And we'll have made six blocks in all this time. <laughs> I feel like I'm, because I'm on a slower machine, I feel like <laughs> it's taking like way too long to make six blocks. Hmm, thank you guys. All right, so I'm going to sew this last setup together and then we'll press all of these and then hook these on. And then six blocks will have been completed in however long I've been on here. <laughs> Probably not my normal amount of time because I'm typically pretty overly fast with all this. Plus I'm talking. So. Can you wind the bobbin with your sewing machine and still... Uh, Ready? so, no, I don't think this sews and winds the bobbin at the same time. What about the other jukey? My other jukey? No, as soon as you engage the bobbin winder on the TL2010Q, you can only use the bobbin winder. What I tend to do, which makes it so much easier, is I wind a ton of bobbins. Like, every machine that I have, except for the serger, because it doesn't take bobbins, every machine that I have has a bunch of bobbins. I bought extra. And what I do is I wind a ton of bobbins and then I sew. So I always have at least, you know, five or six bobbins available to 
to me, to you. All right, so that's the bottom. All right, that's the next one. Next one. Next one. How many stitches are on that machine? How many stitches? I don't even know how to tell that. Well, I don't know. It's more than just straight stitch, right? Yeah, this is more than straight stitch. There's um, probably like, let's see, 10, 30. 40, 60, okay, 80, 100. No, this is not replacing my other machine. I am 100%, uh, 100 a Juki TL2010 girl. This is just my backup machine or when I have company or when I need to do, um, when I need to do, oh, the word is escaping me. Applique. <laughs> For like applique stitches and things like that. Or, oh, and also, Scott wanted to make sure that we tell you guys, Thumper is going to the vet tomorrow. Uh, since I told you last time that he lost a tooth on his own, um, he has lost another tooth. So he lost one of his canines, which is the sharp point front teeth. He has lost one of those on his own. We didn't even know he lost it. This was weeks ago now, but um, yeah. But uh, he's going to the dent, well, to the vet, which is the dentist at the same time. And uh, so hopefully soon he will also be toothless. And it sucks because they don't make dentures for kitties. <laughs> 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 he won't be a vampire no more. But that's okay because I will still love my cat who has no teeth. I wonder if it's like humans when they have their teeth removed, if your top lips just suck in like this. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Does anybody have a toothless animal? Do their dogs go and cats suck the teeth in like this? Uh, no, there's <laughs> a link for the embroidery machine. There is a link for the embroidery machine for those that are asking. I use a uh, brother PRS1. PRS100. Uh, I had to think about that. It was 100. <laughs> Yep. Yep. Do you like it? I love it. I've sewn, I've sewn, I've embroidered my first, I bought some jersey needles and embroidered my first clothing items. I don't know if they're going to be like we we hope <laughs> because uh, um, they haven't been washed yet, those items, to know if it's going to do what it was doing before. But I did buy jersey needles at the suggestion of all of you who own embroidery machines and said that that was probably my problem as to why all the shirts and clothes we've done have sucked in into nothing. So I have all the proper stabilizers and all the proper needles. Well, a pack of needles. So we'll see when we wash those items. Do you ever make anything with scraps from Skullover? The scraps from Skullover have not been used yet. They are in a pile, and I have still been contemplating what I'm going to do with them. I'm trying to make something that's like, wow, with them. So sooner or later, I will get to it. Just not yet. Like I said, I have been doing a lot of sewing lately. I've been doing other things instead of sewing, like watching TV and hanging out in bed. And going and going to and from Phoenix for my hip. Like I literally went twice. We went the um, this past Tuesday, and then we went the Tuesday before. So I literally have drove drove the Tuesday before, went to Phoenix and back, and then went to Vegas and back that Thursday till Saturday, and then on Tuesday again drove to Phoenix and back. So I've been um, you know doing a lot of driving. <laughs> What do you recommend for going fast? Uh, recommending for going fast, I would say get an industrial. But if you can't get an industrial, I would highly suggest the GPTL 2010Q. And if you can't afford that, there is a Brother PQ 1500. There's a Genome. I don't know what theirs is, but I think it's like a 1500 as well. And then there's a Baby Lock machine. 
Um, I, I don't remember the name of that one either. The fans out there that own one could probably say, but those are all straight stitch machines that are just as affordable as the Juki and comparative to. But again, I'm a Juki girl, so that's why I bought a Juki. Well, didn't buy. I traded my pr and I just sewed two pieces of something together. Look at that. Okay, so this one goes to that, and I gotta find this piece because I just sewed two pieces together like a dum dum. <laughs> All right, that definitely does not go there. So this one needs to be ripped off. We're playing with Jack today. Um, and one of these has two on it. It's this one right here. Okay. Look at that. Even I mess up, guys. So know that if it happens to you, it happens to the best of us. All right. That one goes to that one. And then this is a double. How often do you change your needle and paper piecing? When paper piecing? Uh, I sewed all of Scullover and didn't change my needle. <laughs> I'm so bad with changing my needle. You should probably change your needle after every project. Uh, I'm more like change my needle after not every project. After not every project. <laughs> I'm like after maybe a year. I'm really bad with changing the needle. Although if I do have problems with thread or something happens and it's constantly breaking or something happens and it's whatever, I do, however, change my needle then. So it could be like three weeks from the last change, you know, I just, it, whatever happens that I have to change the needle and think it's the problem with that, then that's when I change it. I'm kind of lazy about that, guys. I really am. I don't mean to be, but I am. And I've tried to make it better, but I still don't. <laughs> I use the titanium needles, though, on my Teal 2010Q, so they do last a long time, like more than a year. Thomas <laughs> says change it when it breaks. Yeah. Or when you sew through your finger. <laughs> Oops. I've done that before too. Or my fingernails. I've sewed through my fingernails as well. Not just through the finger. But I did sew through a finger on a live stream. Just don't mind the words that I say during that one. <laughs> Alright. This one goes to that. And that one goes to that. I don't know how I did that. But I guess when you're not paying attention. You're having fun. You sew the wrong stuff together. Or in my case. Two pieces. And I didn't even feel it when nesting the seam. <laughs> Double nested perfectly. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. But, yeah, I'm, I'm lazy about certain steps that we should take as quilters. But, you know. On my long arm, though, I do change my needle. That's the only machine I change the needle yeah. on regularly, only because um, some of my client quilts are like uh, t-shirt quilts and those require a different needle. Some of my client quilts are um, only uh, batiks, so I tend to use a different needle size for batiks. And then some are got minky on the back and I tend to use a different needle with the minky on the back. So I go through a whole heck of a lot of needles on the long arm. But that's the only machine that really gets that much care. <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny. Hey, come on. I am using two different color threads here. I got pink on the top and purple in the bobbin. <gasps> so the purple threads from the bobbin are all over this fabric right here. And it's white. I gotta get it out of the seam allowance. And one more. And that will mean I only have six more blocks to make for this project. And then I will move on to the next step. That's not gonna happen today though. I can only sit for so long now. Lately, it's been really bad. All right. 
Let's press these and I'll show you how they get trimmed. And remember, everything has been being pressed towards the center, but you honestly, you can press it whatever direction you want to. Um, that's not going to matter because when I do put this whole quilt together, I'm just doing sashing and corner sewn, so it really doesn't matter which direction. Everything is pressed because as long as it's flat, that's all that matters. One. I'm just making sure they're all in the same direction. And nice and flat and square. What might have been called out from the other room? Could be something slower tonight. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you don't hear my loud machine. I am sewing slower. Normally, I'd probably have made all 12 of these blocks by now. But until I meet my other Juki again. It hasn't been in the shop very long, so long enough for me to get back to sewing again. Because again, like I said, I hadn't been sewing anything. I did hand sew, and I've used the embroidery machine, so I guess I have been doing some stuff. Do you otherwise like the machine? This or one? You it when you it? Yes. It's amazing. It has so many different features. Um, way more like this, uh, like I, my original machine for zigzag stitches and stuff is the brother P, what is that? Uh, S L, uh, I don't even know. It's behind Scott and I can't see cause I have a towel over it, but that brother machine, you can't adjust the monogramming stitches. And before I got an embroidery machine, I used that for my tags and you can't adjust them. This machine, you can adjust them. This machine, you can do different designs, one right after the other, right after the other. Like you could choose all sorts of things on here. Yeah, definitely love this one better than that brother machine. But that brother machine I'm keeping in case, you know, my daughter Maxine comes and wants to sew with me or my, my soon-to-be daughter-in-law Gabby comes to sew with me or even if my son wants to sew with me and Alexa lives too far away, but What's still. Is sewing table? My Do table is Big. 36 by 72. It is enormous. All right, next step is to trim. We need, I use a quilter select ruler. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, quilter select rulers. Well, I love my Missouri star rulers because obviously they're like easy on the go for pre-cuts. But when I need a ruler that's amazing, the quilter select, I'm telling you right now, these things are awesome. You literally lay it and look, the whole fabric, moves with it so there's no messing anything up anyway we're gonna lay an eight and a half inch ruler on here and just know that you can get the omnigrids in eight and a half inches you can get the fiskars in eight and a half inches all the brands make an eight and a half inch ruler we're gonna lay it on here and i am going to lay it nicely and i'm going to go ahead and now trim around like this so you can see i'm not moving anything except for the ruler and i am able to trim eight and a half inches bless you scotty so there is that so i'm only literally these are the extra amounts right here and yeah because i'm a, a weirdo <laughs> i'm saving these ones i have this little pile over here i'm ripping off the smaller piece and saving because they're like one inch so what's that ruler called again it is a quilter select ruler. Many quilt stores sell them. So again, flat iron pressed block. I'm gonna line my ruler up mainly with the corner of the biggest square. So the, the biggest square, I'm using that corner as my starting corner. And lining everything up from there. And then snippety snippety. And I'm going all the way around because it Kind of gets a, a little wonky and don't worry about that because again it's trimmable so i'm literally you know like tiny little slivers off of it but there is block number two what are you using for sashing your cornerstones i will be doing sashing and cornerstones out of my pink um geode fabric or mineral by tulip and 
the cornerstones will be the blue, and that's also what will be my border is the blue mineral fabric from the Tula line. Because that's all I have. Where do you get those rulers? Uh, a lot of different places. I don't have a link for them or affiliate with them. I just tell you guys about them. So if you can find them at your local quilt store, or um, I do have my local quilt store listed, um, or I'm not sure if Sewing Machines Plus, which is one of my affiliates, sells them or not. Well, I haven't. Local quilt store is an affiliate. I put that on there. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure, but I know like you can find them at, I don't know, I don't know where. I don't even know if that quarter shop sells them because they also have, I think, like, whatever. You'd have to look. Just type them in in Google, honestly. Quote their select rulers, you know? There's another block. And I'm ripping these little pieces away because I'm so crazy that I'm saving these little one inch cutoffs. Hmm? Good night, Becca. I shall talk to you another day. Probably tomorrow in the morning, like always. <laughs> All right, line this next one up. Some of them you only need to trim the two sides. They like came out perfect. And some, they didn't, but that's okay. Probably didn't help that I, you know, sewed two blocks together on one, or so two pieces I mean. All right, last one to trim. Last one's a rotten egg. Sorry. All right. I love these rulers because you can literally spin the block and you don't have to have a rotating mat for that. So there is that. Six blocks made in however long I've been on here. So I guess I'm not. An hour. Look at that. Woohoo. I guess I'm not that slow. All right. Let me toss. Yeah, that's a lot. I do appreciate all 1,100 and something of you here. That's amazing. So the idea, I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to move this out of the way. Move this out of the way. The idea, I thought about putting these on point, which would be like this. I thought about it. It's not, it doesn't mean I'm doing it. I'm going to move these out of the way real quick so that I can lay some out. So I thought about on point with sashing. So literally in between the blocks have sashing and cornerstones, but be, hold on, I need another piece, but be on point. What size is the ruler? It's an eight and a half inch ruler. That one's too big. So think about it like this, but with cornerstones and then being on point like this. I did think about doing this. I'm not going to now though. It's, it was just an idea, but I have a feeling that on point with cornerstones is gonna take a little bit more effort. <laughs> and I'm trying to go with as less effort as possible. Let me find a little cornerstone put in these spots so that you get the general idea. So this is what an on point would be, where they're on <laughs> point, and all these center pieces would be coming down like this. Your cup your yes. <laughs> so I thought about that, but then I was like, nah. Because again, why do I want all that extra work? <laughs> I really don't. So then I thought, having them, Come together. Let's grab some more so there's more color variation. There is a link for Fat Quarter Shop in the chat. And then I thought about this where all the blocks come together towards the center. So I would be piecing them in rows 
like this. So one would be down, the next one would be in. Of course, there would be sashing between them, obviously, like this. And then all of them would come together like this. So I would do six across by seven down. And I think this is the actual layout I'm going to go with. So it'll be sashing and cornerstones. Those are oversized, but you get the picture here. Because it's what I have available to me right here. These are one inch strips. Open that up just like that. There we go. That way you get the general idea here. And then they'll be sashing in between the blocks as well with, again, more cornerstones. Just like that. So that is what I'm going to go with. Is six across, seven down, alternating. So if it's six across, it'd be there'd be three sets with the squares spacing in across. One, two, three times, and then the bottom one will just be the a row of them coming together like this. What size is your table again? My table is 36 by 72. You're going to have to write that down. Yeah. We had about my table. So I had been looking. I don't know if you guys remember. For those of you that have been with my channel for a long time, remember that I sewed over in that corner of the room on a stand-up table, like a bar height table. And then I had a bar height chair, but my legs kept going numb. So I really, really, really needed a new desk. Every single desk that we were finding in the whole wide world here in our local area and at stores online, all the drawers are on the right hand side. A typical desk, the drawers are on the right because everybody's mostly right handed. I needed a desk where the drawers were on the left because my sewing machine and I sit on the right so that I have the most of my desk that way. So we scoured the internet for like, I don't know, a good what, eight months of my legs going numb on the stand up desk and having to stand up and sew that uh, it took that long to finally come across this desk and it was from an office that was closing and the drawers are on the left. So I have all the room underneath this desk on the right. So that's why I'm able to slide over here and work and slide over here and work and not have anything in my way. If the drawers were on this side, we would be hitting it and you can't use your knee lift. Your machine would have to be over this way. I mean, too much of a hassle. So yeah. I love this desk and it took forever to find it, but we found it and it's heavy, heavy, heavy. And you can sit it since it's an office desk, it, like from a, a lawyer's office or tax accountant office. I mean, the other side of the desk, you know, when you go into an accountant's office, you can sit on the other side and they're on this side doing their work for you. You have leg room on the other side, too. So when I have company, you can sew on both sides of the desk, which is even better. So that not everybody's crowded on one side of the desk and you don't have to have like 500 desks to sew on. So it works great when I have company. All right, guys. That's that. So this is the general idea of what I'm going to do. So by the time you see this project next, I should have it all the way done like this. And then I'm also going to go around it. And all these are one inch. So my cornerstones will be one inch by one inch. And then my sashing strips are one inch. And then I'm also going to do its first border with a one inch. I might go with two inch, honestly, for the first border of this pink. And then do like a four inch or four and a half inch of the blue after that. And then that will be the quilt. It'll be super easy, super fun. And even though this is directional prints, like some of these are directional, I'm actually not caring about that. If they're upside down, right side up, or turn to the side, that just means you can turn your quilt any direction and it'll still be right side up. <laughs> so there's that. So that's the idea. <coughs> Do we have any questions, Mr. Scotty? Zillions. They're Zillions. So fast, I missed the majority of them. Scott I'm is like missing. Scott's missing most of the comments because there is way more of you here than there normally is. So. What's a share sale? Share sale is the, the anything that you see that we link in. That's my affiliate company. So that's how my 
anything that I link to you guys, it'll always say share a sale first. But as soon as you open it, it actually goes to Sewing Machines Plus or whatever. Share, share sales the company that it's, provides the links. Yeah, it's, it's the company that provides the links for me to give to you guys so that I get that small, tiny kickback from, I'm not trying to sell you the product, but definitely trying to, you know, make a little bit of money if you need to buy that product. And I know how to find it. So there's that. <laughs> What else? If you guys have any questions, ask now or forever hold your peace because I'm about ready to get well, off they, of here. They had a zillion. I know they did. He's, he's missing a lot. <laughs> Fine. See? No? All right. Uh, this is my record high for people in the chat, yes. But of course, I kind of felt that since I have gained quite a few, I'm over 40,000 subs now. Uh, since I have gained quite a, a lot more in the past couple weeks, um, like 2,000 more, I kind of figured that the chat would go higher on Sundays. Plus, it's, it's a hot Sunday. Everybody wants to be in and sewing. Well, at least if you're in Arizona, because it's literally 101 degrees with a breeze outside. <laughs> what time do you recommend for a new quilt? Pattern for a new quilter, honestly, if you're brand new to it, I would say sew a bunch of five inch squares together. Sew like 10 five inch squares across by 10 down. Get the hang of sewing your quarter inch seam. Get the hang of nesting your seams. Get the hang of the, the cutting of your fabric. I say do something super simple first. That way you can have all that ready for your waha quilts, you know, the better quilts afterwards. So I always say, for suggestions, first quilt should be the easiest possible. So make a bunch of four patches, hook them all together, or just make rows and sew those together. I have plenty of videos showing you how to do the most simplest basic quilts possible. Um, so if you want to check those out, they're somewhere on my channel because there's over thousands of videos. Is this, a sew -along? <laughs> this is not a sew along. This is a sewing challenge with four of my friends. So sew Becca. Off Kilter Crafter Ian and Teresa Louise I Quilt 2 are all involved. We all have had a layer cake of line work by Tula Pink. And we just brought our own additional fabrics, background, accents, whatever. Chose a pattern and went with it. And I just did this. This is my pattern. And this is me having fun, going with the flow. And we're all on all of our channels. If you followed, we posted the main video was filmed here on my channel during a live stream a couple weeks back. Each of them are also on their channels going to individually tell the story and how they made it and what pattern they used and show their finished quilt on their channel before our next collab, which I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be fun. Does it cost money to subscribe to your channel? It does not cost money. Subscribing is free. Watching the videos is free. It's all free. Unless you want YouTube premium, which I don't know how much that costs because they don't offer, YouTube don't offer their uh, content creators with over like a certain amount of subs, a uh, free premium, which is kind of dumb, I think, but whatever. Maybe YouTube will hear that in the future. They need to you know, give us something. <laughs> but yeah, it's all free. Everything's free to you guys. All my videos and everything. You just have to deal with commercials, which again, is free. <laughs> They can skip oh yeah, you can want. skip the commercials too if you want. It gives but us money if they watch them. Yeah, if you watch them, yeah, that's how seconds. I get paid. At least thirty seconds of the commercial is yeah. how I get paid. They just watch in thirty case. seconds and then you skip it. Yeah, <laughs> we just let them play, so no big deal. I do it on all my friends' channels too. I just let the commercials play because I don't have premium. What size rulers should beginners buy? Uh, for a beginner, I would say having a six inch or six and a half inch by 24 inch, which is, I don't have one, I don't have one next to me, but I do have an eight and a half by 24. So yardage comes on a bolt, which is, notice I'm not standing. <laughs> yardage comes on a bolt this long. The average width of a fabric is 42 to 44 inches from selvage to selvage. This is in half on a bolt. So when you open your yardage and you're cutting off of your bolt, it is nice to have a ruler that is at least six inches by 24 inches so that you can completely cover 
your 22 inches of visible space from your fabric on your bolt. So that is a number one ruler to have. The next size ruler to have is either a six and a half inch or an eight and a half inch because everything can be trimmed down to a six and a half inch or an eight and a half inch. And just having the two sizes only, you can make a bazillion quilts, which is these two sizes. You don't need a ton of rulers. Of course, we all end up with them eventually because we're quilters and um, we have to have all the best and brand new of everything, right? <laughs> so, but just as a beginner, you really don't need all that. Just a six by 24 or an eight and a half by eight and a half. Those are the best sizes to have. Batting, um, it depends. Uh, I use lots of different batting and I also um, carry tons of different batting for when I long arm quilt for people. So I prefer to use 100% cotton, the white, because it definitely is easier to see. Like if you have a uh, white fabric in your quilt, it's nice to have white batting underneath so that you don't see through it. Um, because if you have a darker one, you can actually see through it like the, the natural color, but I do use natural, but I have 100% cotton in natural and in white. And then I actually like using 80-20. That is mostly my go-to for my own quilt, for my family's quilt, for my friend's quilt, anything that I make for somebody, I always use 80-20. Um, the kind that I use is <coughs> about a three ounce loft, four ounce, three, between three and four. So it's quite thick. And it creates like the best, the best like puffy look. It's amazing. And then I also use polyester because I, again, as a long armor, a long armor who enters show quilts, polyester batting mixed with cotton batting. So like a layer of 100% cotton and then a layer of poly definitely creates that wow factor on a lot of quilts that I do for quilt shows. So I use all different kinds. I have not carried wool or you i used wool once but i've not carried wool because i live in arizona and most of my long arm quilting clients are here in arizona so we none of us use wool at all because it's just way too warm and we live in a warm climate um and i don't use uh what's that uh bamboo i have not used bamboo uh batting at all ever yet so, and I don't think I ever will probably because it's kind of on the pricey side. So I stick with cotton mainly. What's the handle? The handle. On the oh. They're all <laughs> I'm going to say it the real way because I'm, you know, it's a no shit handle. <laughs> it's for people who are handicapped in the shower. shower Whatever. It sounds better when I say it the correct way. So. It usually goes on the wall of your shower and then it hooks on, you know, the handles hook on and it helps you get up if you've fallen on the floor or if you have a chair and you need to get up from it or any of that kind of stuff. But in the quilting world, it holds your ruler. <laughs> so you can get these at like Harbor Freight or anywhere. Yeah. I would suggest those places and not from a quilt store. I love to support local quilt shops. But it's double the price in a local quilt shop as opposed to just going to Harbor Freight or Walmart for one of these. So, I mean, if you want to pay that much more, but it's double the price again. So, but that's what it is. It is a handle for the shower and it works amazing. They also at Harbor Freight sell um, little ones so that you can put one. It's a little round one and it has a handle on it. You can put it on your square rulers as well because this does not fit on a square ruler. It's mainly for the long one. So they sell little smaller ones too. I have not tried those. Um, they also sell ones that are kind of like a pop socket. I wouldn't use those. Make sure you get the kind that have the, the clip down. So that way it stays on there. If it doesn't have a clip on it, then that suction is just going to come off or slip or move. So make sure you get the kind with the clip. But yeah, that's what it is. And it works great for us quilters. Any other questions? Uh, what pattern do you recommend for a summer quilt mainly? And what's the big name issue? 
Uh, summer quilt and AZ, yeah, you could put a sheet on the inside or you can um, just put 100% cotton in it, but a thinner one. Like, I would say the cheapest brand cotton available. <laughs> so go to Walmart and get a package of cotton batting and they're going to be a lot thinner than what you would buy. Um, I don't even know, it's like Mountain Mist brand. And when I first started, I bought all those brands. So nothing against them. They are great. They nice and warm, but I would say get one of the off brand ones because they're a lot, a lot, a lot thinner, but it gives you that weight of a quilt and not the heat of a quilt. Anything else? All right. He's trying. There's so many comments. It's hard to get them all. But I'm ready to get off here, guys. I do have a stomach ache. I've been running with a stomach ache all day long. Uh, obviously, I still work and stuff with problems. But it's definitely time for me to just kick back and relax and watch TV. Because that's what I've been doing lately. And I'm enjoying it. <laughs> so I want to thank all of you, so many of you, for hanging out and watching. Thank those of you for the super chats earlier. Like I said, you guys do not have to do that. I do not ask for that. Um, so that's all on you and we definitely appreciate it and it goes to good use here in my coffee room <laughs> So thank you all so very very much for watching. I will be on tomorrow morning sometime not scheduled just random pay attention uh, for a mail opening because During this time I've been away regular mail not just sympathy mail, but regular mail has come in So I kind of need to get back on track with that plus a haul from what I got in Vegas. So that will be tomorrow sometime. So don't forget to check that out. Other than that, see you guys next Sunday. Oh, and Tuesday, there's a video coming out. So check that one out too. <laughs> Anyways, bye everybody. Bye.